All right, well, welcome back to University of Kentucky Meats Lab. And we're gonna talk about sanitation today. I'm here with Dr. Melissa Morgan, one of our microbiologists. And what I think is really interesting about when we talk about microbiology and food safety and food, uh, food poisoning and food, you know, in general, is the safety of that product. And I usually ask my students in classes one question. What is the most dangerous thing you do in a day's time? And a lot of them will say things like, you know, especially here on campus, crossing the street yep. can be pretty dangerous, yes. you know, or, you know, driving down the road or so on uh, that they, they talk about. However, when I throw this out there, right, most of us eat out. I think the statistics are we eat about, eat out, a meal out about 25 to 50 percent of the time we're eating at a, at a restaurant or a food stand or a food truck and I talk about what about eating as being very dangerous because you're putting a lot of faith into somebody you don't know and so food safety is extremely extremely important especially here in the meats industry and we have a somewhat dirty block and we have some of our, our equipment for cleaning up, all right? And we have chemicals, we got sanitizers, we got some pieces of equipment as well that we need to focus on and how to clean this stuff up. And so one of the things that we always do, the very first thing when we start cleaning up is we grab one of these, the block scraper, and we start scraping off the heavy stuff. And then we spray it down. And now, Dr. Morgan, I know you're going to, we've had this discussion before. What ends up happening is we spray it down. We put the degreaser on there. We spray it off. We put the sanitizer on and we go home. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that method there? <laughs> well, first, I would like to agree with you that eating is one of the most dangerous things that we do if it's not handled appropriately. And we put a lot of faith in people outside the home. But these pieces of information are important at home too because we tend to be a little lax in our sanitation and cleaning in our, even our own kitchen. So we have to take responsibility for taking care of our families. But as Greg has mentioned, one of the key things is you get rid of the large materials, you scrape them away, you dispose of them properly. And then we come in and we actually do a deep clean. You have to use some sort of cleaning. Many times in the meats industry, we're using some sort of a product called a degreaser because we have a lot of fat and it makes it easier to get rid of the soil, the residues of the food that's on the surface. That degreaser can be very, very effective and you also, you also have to be careful because some of these products are really tough on the hands. So you need to be cautious and utilize them by virtue of the label. They're going to tell you the best and most effective concentrations to utilize and the safety steps that you need to be able to utilize those appropriately. You use the de degreaser, you follow the instructions. If there's a residue time where it's supposed to sit there or if it can be immediately rinsed off, it's all in the label. So you follow the labeling. Use the degreaser and then we rinse it off. It may be that you're not using something as fancy. Maybe you're using something as simple as Dawn which is the same thing. It does dissolve a lot of grease. It has a detergent factor to it. It'll help you clean surfaces. But the key things, a thorough rinsing. You do not want to leave any chemical residue on your surface for a food, sur food contact surface. This is very different than what you may do in your toilet or what you may do in your shower. This is something where you want this to be a very clean surface. Then you can come back and use your sanitizers. A lot of industrial sanitizers are quaternary ammonia sanitizers, and you can utilize these, once again, reading the instructions and following them appropriately. In most cases, these sanitizers require a perfect rinse too. You need to rinse with clean, potable water so that we don't leave residual chemicals on the surface. All right, so as you mentioned, if you're going to do the cleaning and sanitizing, the night before, at the end of the day, make sure you leave the surface very nicely rinsed. Now you can use bleach also, and we are not promoting any particular brand here. It does have some limitations in that it can be rough on the surfaces, on these plastic or what are these, fiberglass yeah, poly, surface, yeah, poly, poly surfaces, yeah. they'd work fine. But if you're using it a lot on stainless steel, you have to be cautious and you will want to go ahead and rinse it there also. But in some cases, you can leave a 
bleach, spray, or residue on a surface because it breaks down in light and breaks down over time. So depending upon what kind of chemicals you're using as a sanitizer, there's probably gonna be another rinse. The other thing is that when we do this cleaning and sanitizing today, and then tomorrow morning we're gonna start production, have we protected that surface so that it didn't get recontaminated overnight? Maybe it's worth another, at least a water rinse before you start work. Not a bad idea. Now one of the things that we talked about is, and you and I have talked about, is this yes. guy right here. Seems fairly simple, we all get these scratchy pads. Sometimes you have to scrub because even though a surface looks clean, we can still get these nasty things called biofilms, right? Absolutely, and, and we've all felt biofilms, whether we knew that was the name. When you grab a pot and you feel some grease, you feel some stickiness, there, it's a leftover residue, and elbow grease is the best thing for that. The degreaser will help you, but elbow grease, cleaning the corners, the edges, the places maybe that are not the complete surface, when we look at a surface, we say, oh, that looks clean, it feels clean, well, it's okay, but when we get to places where there's gonna be a lot of water that flows through it, or places like the edges of your benches, those things can build a biofilm, and what does that mean to food safety? A biofilm is pretty much a, a, an environment where any organism can survive, and many organisms like to survive in it. They produce a lot of stickiness, polysaccharides, and we'll have pathogens that will harbor there and that will increase in number there. So we need to make sure we don't provide uh, appropriate environments. We need to control that so we don't invite those pathogens into our meats lab. Yeah, exactly. And there's, we've got some pieces of equipment up here that we probably ought to talk about because there's some research out there and, and Dr. Morgan and I have, have dealt with this as well. We're really good about cleaning from here on up. <laughs> Here on down underneath this table, we're not very good at, or we just take this handsaw and we just spray it off and we put some sanitizer on there and we think it's clean. But in reality, watch this. Boy, I take that blade off of there and I've got a lot of nooks and crannies that I need to clean in this handsaw as well. And it's same with all the equipment that's around us. Training your individuals how to take apart the equipment and scrub the equipment, clean and sanitize that equipment is key. I've been in situations where one of the things we talk about is a pathogen called listeria and ready to eat food, which is a nasty creature. And they're like, we're cleaning, we're sanitizing it, we're still getting positive. And all of a sudden it was, there was a plate on a slicer that somebody didn't know how to take off. You take it off and it's full of all kinds of stuff in there as well. And other things, you know, got a couple of knives here. And one is, both of them are dirty but we think clean the blade, clean the handle, we forget about the hilt of the knife and getting back in there. If you get really close up on these knives, you can see that the hilt is dirty and it's gotta be cleaned as well. And then one thing you and I were talking about before we shot the video, this guy right here that most of us yeah. carry, a scabbard. Yeah, and we forget about it. We forget about the fact that we're putting, we may put a very clean knife into an environment where it gets contaminated, right? So. You need to be very intentional when you're doing your work. Where do I lay my knives? How do I handle my knives? And if I'm gonna use a scabbard, then I need to make sure that I clean and sanitize it. And not just the eyeball check, right? Eyeballs are not gonna show you where pathogens are. You need to actually use cleaners, sanitizers, and a good rinse. And as you mentioned, one of the most critical things is that when you have equipment, you need to have detailed information for your employees and the folks working there on how to take it apart, the appropriate cleaning materials, whether you use uh, a degreaser or something else, and also how to handle, sanitize, and then not just clean it, but how do we put it back together without recontaminating it. You know, we don't want to have a clean piece of equipment and lay it on the floor and then put it back together. Defeats all of our hard work. Yeah, and watch this with these scabbards. How many of you knew it did that? I for did. cleaning. <laughs> they come apart. Now, two things before we finish this video up that I want to yeah. visit with you. Like we talked about, we're good about cleaning from here on up. We're not really good about cleaning from here on down above us. So microorganisms are going to be in our environment everywhere. What we're trying to do is minimize the possibility of these organisms getting into the food product. 
especially if they happen to be pathogens, but also for spoilage. So this is also a quality issue. When we talk about our ceilings and what can fall out of the ceilings, um, what can be splashed up on the ceilings if we're using hoses, we can make very rich biofilms in our ceilings so that they just drip down occasionally and get onto the food product. So particularly if you're doing any heating where you've got, or you have a, a facility that goes through a hot cold where we might see condensation or we have really high humidity, condensation is evil and it's gonna find its way into a food. And so how do we eliminate that and protect our product from above? And as you mentioned from below, the floors are always gonna be dirty, the drains are always gonna be dirty. Even if we've just cleaned, we're walking in there with our boots, so we have to be very intentional on how we're cleaning things and use the elbow grease and maybe bend over sometimes because it's not convenient to bend over, but that's where things can reside. So we don't have pockets of pathogens and spoilage bacteria in our facility. Exactly. And one of the last things I wanted to, to mention before we wrap this video up, I want to circle around uh, to this, the sanitizer. Extremely important. We talked about half has to be clean. Your surfaces have to be clean. Just because you throw sanitizer on this chunk of meat over there doesn't mean it's going to be clean. What's your thoughts on we got a quaternary ammonia sanitizer and a chlorinated sanitizer? Should we rotate those? Yeah, I really like the idea of rotating or at least sticking in one of the other products at least once a week so that we don't build up resistance to the particular product that we're utilizing. But you're absolutely right. You cannot sanitize a clean sur or a dirty surface. So if there is meat, oil, greases, you cannot sanitize it. These things are not designed to kill everything if there's a lot of organic matter laying on the surface. So best practices to me would be to use whatever one you prefer most consistently and then maybe once a week throw in a good sanitization with the other sanitizer. Now I'd also recommend that you do look at where you're getting your sanitizers from and make sure that you're utilizing one that will target the populations that you want. There's so many products on the market and we, we can't go through with, whether it's a good product or not good product, whether it's best for the meat slab, whether it's best for uh, stainless steel, whether it's best for a clean in place system, all those things are factors that you need to follow through and make sure you're using the right product, following their instructions, and perhaps rotate it at least once a week. And, and to conclude everything, make sure we're clean, make sure we're doing what we need to do, make sure we properly train our employees how to take all this equipment apart and put it back together. We're scrubbing things, we're sanitizing things. And what I think is fascinating, for me who's been in the industry for about 36 years, we really didn't get focused on food safety until the early 90s. Yeah. And, and I realized to our students, that's like ancient history, but for us, it's like last week. And so your job, is to make sure that we're producing a clean and sanitary product that you would be willing to serve to your own family as well. That's always the thing we use, whether we're talking about the craftsmanship of cutting a piece of meat, the quality of the piece of meat, even the cleanliness of your environment, is would you serve this to your family? And as always, if you have any questions, please leave comments below or you can email one of us. We'd be more than happy to uh, answer your questions. We're very passionate about food safety. And thanks for watching. Bye.